you fill out a simple form, name, email, service they're interested in, industry, date, and some notes. Click one button and your client is automatically added to a structured searchable database. And from here, you can sort and filter entries by date, industry or service, etc. And connect the data to automatic reports to get insights into your clients at a glance. And while I'm using a client database to demonstrate how it works, this same system can be adapted for many tasks like inventory management, expense tracking, employee information, project management, and loads more. If your work involves capturing and organizing information, and you can't afford a full-blown SQL database or similar, this automatic Excel database will save you time, reduce errors, and simplify your workflow. And yes, the full working template is yours free from the link in the video description below. But first, I'll walk you through building it step-by-step step, so you can customize it to suit your exact needs. We're going to start with a new Excel workbook, and in the interest of time, I've inserted sheets for the client form and database, along with my logo to prevent people stealing my video, which in the era of AI has become a thing. I'll start by renaming this sheet client form, and I'll right click and change the tab color to blue. I'll add a heading, new client form, and the input fields, which are full name, email, service, industry, date, and notes. Next, let's apply some formatting to make it look like a form. Control one to open the formatting. I'm going to center the heading across the selection as opposed to merge field. Let's give this a blue fill color. We'll make it wider, the font bigger, center it vertically, and let's make it white. Right, the rest of the form is going to have a gray fill color. And we'll make it this pale shade of gray. And then the fields that I want to enter data into are going to have white fill. And I'm also going to add a border. So I'm going to go into more borders. And here I want the border to be in the same shade of blue. And we'll just make it on the bottom. All right, let's make the notes field bigger. We're going to wrap the text and top align it. Likewise, for this one, we'll align that to the top. Let's make this text right aligned and we'll change the color to a dark shade of gray just to make it a little bit less harsh. And we'll just bump it away from the edge of the cell slightly. We could actually make these rows a bit bigger just to make them feel a bit more spacious. Okay, that looks great. Let's get rid of the grid lines on the view tab, deselect. Now, modern forms have rounded edges. This one looks a bit dated because of the sharp corners. And because we can't round edges on cells themselves, what I'm going to do is insert a shape and we're going to use this rounded corner rectangle. I'm going to draw it around my form roughly. And then we're going to get rid of the shape fill. And for the outline, we're going to go in and change the weight to the thick outline. And then we're going to change it to the same shade of gray. We'll change the radius and we'll just resize it so that it's exactly the same size as the cells. Let's give it a 3D effect with a shadow and that'll just make it look like the form is sitting off the page. Let's select these cells and we'll center them vertically. That's ruined my alignment here. So let's go and bump them off to the left a little bit. Now for the industry field, I want to ensure we stay consistent. So I'm going to insert a drop down list on the data tab, data validation. Here I want to allow a list and I'll paste in the list for my source. So I want them to choose from education, finance, healthcare, retail, and technology. Each one is just separated by a comma. Click OK. And now we have a drop down list that ensures our industry selections are consistent. For the date, I'm going to use the today function to automatically populate it. I'm going to leave this cell unlocked just to allow people to override the date if required. This is going to make it a little bit quicker for them to complete the form. Now you can see my dates here are date, month, year, but the template will automatically adapt to pick up your date settings. This setup not only looks clean, it also gives you structure to automate everything else. Next, let's build the actual database where all the submitted entries will be saved automatically. We'll start by renaming the sheet database and I'll right click and change the tab color for this one to bright green. I need a column here for each field in my form. So I'm just going to type in the headers 
and then selecting the headers, I'm going to format it as a table and I'll go with this light green style here. Check the box to say my table has headers, click OK and now I have a table with one empty row ready to receive the data from my form. I'm also going to give the table a name that's easy to remember. So up on the table design tab in the table name field, we'll call this client data. And in the date column with it selected, I'm just going to go to the home tab and format this as a short date. Let's also apply some conditional formatting on the email field that identifies if there are any duplicates. So on the home tab, conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, and at the bottom, duplicate values. Here it's going to fill any duplicate values with light red fill and dark red text. That's perfect, that'll stand out. I'll also insert a couple of rows and at the top here I'm going to put a warning bar that indicates if duplicates are detected because once our table gets to 40 rows or more it might be difficult to see them. And for this I'll use an if formula to check if the first row is blank. Now I don't want to reference the client data full name because that's going to reference the full column. Here I'm just going to put the cell reference in as B6. So if that is blank then we're going to do nothing, otherwise we need another if. If the count of the unique list of emails, so we'll just reference the email column, close unique, close count. If that's not equal to the count of all the emails, then there must be duplicates. Therefore, we're going to return a warning. I'm going to use an emoji and to insert it, we press the Windows key with the semicolon. I'm going to use this warning sign here, but you can search for them. Warning, press enter escape to close the emoji window and then we're going to follow it with duplicate customers exist. Close double quotes on the message. Otherwise we're just going to return a blank which has two double quotes. Close parentheses on my second if, close it on my first, press enter. Now we don't see it obviously because this is blank and we don't have any duplicates. I'm also going to select the cells at the top of the table and apply some conditional formatting. And before I go in I'm just going to copy the message and then conditional formatting, new rule. Here I want to use a formula to determine which cells to format. So where this cell equals the message, I'm going to format it in a red fill and let's make the font white so it's easy to read. Click OK and OK. I'm just going to make this row a bit bigger, make the font bigger and center it vertically. And we'll check whether that's working a little bit later on. Okay, now your database is ready to receive data and you'll get a warning if there are duplicates. Next is the magic part, making Excel save the form entries into the database automatically. Now you could do this with a macro or Office scripts. I'm going to use Office scripts. That way this file can be used in Excel for the desktop or Excel online. We'll go back to the new client form and let's enter some data. The name, email, this person's interested in Power Query, their industry is education. We'll leave the date as today's date and we're going to automate gathering and cleaning of student grades. Now I'm ready to record the Office script to copy this data to my database. On the Automate tab, I want to click Record Actions. The Record Actions pane opens on the right and Excel's now recording every action I take. So I'm going to Control C to copy each item and paste it into my form. Don't worry about the warning, that's temporary because as I copy in the next item, it goes away. And when we have our script running, we won't see it execute like that. So I'm just copying the industry, the date, just Control C and Control V, and lastly, the notes. Okay, that column needs to be a bit wider, but remember the script is recording, so I don't want to change the column width there. We'll do it later on once we stop recording. You can see on the right all of the steps that have been recorded. So I'm going to stop it there and we'll see what's been produced. I'll just make this a little bit wider and we can go in and edit the script. So we can see it's recorded all of the copying and pasting from one sheet to the other, but it needs some editing because my table already had an empty row to paste the data into. The next time I run the script, I'll need to add a new row for the new data. And this is where AI is your friend. I'm going to use ChatGPT, but you can use your preferred AI tool. So what I'm going to do is copy the script, Control C to copy it. And then I'm going to go to my browser where I've got ChatGPT open. Now you notice I've selected ChatGPT 4.0. 
just found ChatGPT5 is not as good at writing code. So I'm going to control V to paste in my code. And then at the top, I'm just going to shift and enter to enter some space for my prompts. The prompts should be very explicit. I'll paste it in. I've recorded an offer script to copy data from cells on the client form sheet to an Excel table called client data on the database sheet. This is the recorded script. And then I'm going to control end to go to the end and then add some more carriage returns. And I'll paste in the rest of my prompt, which is, however, I need a few changes. First, allow for the first row of the client data table to be empty, in which case paste the data in the first row. If it's not empty, add a new row, then get the last row of the table and paste the data there. Two, the client data table doesn't start in cell A1, so you should reference the actual table range. Three, then clear the cells in the client form sheet, except for the date field in cell D13, ready for a new client. Rewrite the script accordingly. Let's send that. And just like that, we've got our script rewritten. You'll notice it's a lot clearer. It starts by declaring some variables for the selected sheet, the database sheet, client table, and so on. Then it checks if the first row is empty, otherwise it adds a new row. Then it copies the values from the selected sheet, which is the client form sheet, and it pastes it into the table. And lastly, it clears the form ready for a new client. So let's copy this code and we'll go back to Excel and we'll replace the script that Excel recorded with our code from ChatGPT. I'm going to save it and let's click on the script name and we'll call this copy to database and our script is saved. Now you might think, why bother recording the script at all? Couldn't we just get ChatGPT to write it all for us? And yes, you could, but I find it's quicker to record part of the script and give that to ChatGPT as a starting point because then I don't have to spell out all the cell references and sheet names, etc. So let's go and test it out. I'll enter a new customer, Brian Johnson. He wants help with Power Pivot. His industry is technology. We'll leave today's date and he wants data modeling help. So over in the code editor on the right, click the run button. It says the script is running. Let's go to the database sheet. There it is there. Brian Johnson has been added. Let's make that column a bit wider. Job done. So now that I'm happy with the script, I'm going to go back to my client form and we'll go back to script details. And here I can add a button to execute the script. So clicking on the add button in workbook, you can see it's been added there. And when I hover over it, I get the hand symbol. I'm just going to hold control and select the button. We'll reposition it down here. And I'm just going to give it some formatting in keeping with my form. So we'll give it a blue color. Let's change the outline to a shade of gray and we'll give it a shadow just so it looks more like a button. And a couple of embellishments I might add is some icons. So on the inset tab, icon. I'm going to grab one for my form and one for the button. So on a customer, let's go with that one. And we want to add a plus sign and we'll go with that one. So I'll insert those two icons. Let's make them a lot smaller. This is for my new client form and I'll make the fill white. And this one's for my button. Let's just make it a lot smaller. We'll also make it white and I just want to align the text on the button to the right to allow room for my icon. Now it's important that you don't group the button and the icon together because in Excel Online you won't be able to execute the script. All right, that looks good. By the way, if you're enjoying these kinds of pro level tricks, this is exactly the type of stuff I go into in my Excel Expert course. It's designed to take you way beyond the basics from building smart automated spreadsheets like this one to creating systems that work for you, not the other way around. You'll get step-by-step -step lessons, real-world examples, and downloadable workbooks so you can follow along. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, remember in the database, we added a check for duplicates? Well, it'd be great if we also warn the user in the client form before they added a duplicate client. So let's do that here. We'll do it for the full name and email, and we can use xmatch, or you can use match if you don't have xmatch. Either of these functions will return the row number of the full name. Where are we looking it up? 
in the full name column of our database and the match mode should be zero for exact match close parentheses on X match you can see it returns an error because we don't have a name in here so we can use if with is number to return a message warning the user that this customer is already in the database because if it returns a number that means it's found the customer so if it returns a number then we want to return a message and again our windows key semicolon to use the warning icon this customer is already in the database otherwise return blank close if press enter so let's enter jane doe and you can see we get the warning let's format this font in red to make it stand out more all right let's copy this down for the email so instead of full name here we're referencing the email column and we can say this email is already in the database let's enter jane's email and now we get the warning there we're going to keep pressing on because we want to test the conditional formatting in the database as well jane's service was power query she was in education and we'll just enter test duplicate here all right let's copy this to the database and check that the warning is working there as well we've got a message up here to say the script succeeded i can close that and we can see both the conditional formatting in the email column has worked and our warning at the top. Perfect. So let's delete that duplicate customer. The warning's gone away. And don't forget, you can use the database filters to filter and search by customer's name, email, and so on. And of course, you can analyze this data in pivot tables, insert a pivot table, pop it on a new sheet, add some charts so you can understand your customers at a glance. Now, before we share the file with our users, let's go back to the client form and protect the sheet so it's quick and easy for them to enter their data. First, we need to select the cells we want them to be able to enter data in. Control 1 to open the formatting. On the protection tab, we want to unlock these cells. Click OK. Now, all the cells in Excel are locked by default. We've just unlocked the ones we want them to enter data into. Let's get rid of that warning. Ignore that. And then on the review tab, we're going to protect the sheet. Now here, I want them to be able to select unlocked cells, but I don't want them to select locked cells. So that's the only thing I want them to be able to do. You can also add a password here, but I'll leave it blank. Click OK. Now with the cells locked, if I press enter or tab, it only toggles between the cells that they can enter data. So that's just going to make it really quick for them to navigate and input their information. If you want your users to access the form using Excel online, we need to also set up the worksheet protection there. So let's open the file in Excel online. Here I am in my browser in the form. Again, I'm going to hold control and select the cells I want them to be able to edit. Then on the review tab, under protection, I'm going to manage protection. And this opens a pane on the right. I've got protect sheet on, but I need to add an unlocked range. So add range, it's detected all the cells I've already selected. So that makes it quick and easy. All I need to do is give this a name. We'll call it input cells, save it. And now my users can just use enter to toggle through the cells they can input data in. I'll just pause while I enter some customer data so we can test the script in Excel online. Now I can click copy to database. We get a run status to say that it's preparing to run. We have to give it permission initially, so I'll click allow. It's telling me that it's succeeded. Let's go to the database. And there's Richard Ellis, our new customer, entered automatically into our database. Okay, let's recap what we've built. We've got a clean, user-friendly client form, one-click automation to save and clear entries, and a structured, filterable client database that can be connected to pivot tables, charts, and formulas for analysis. This isn't just a spreadsheet, it's a system you can adapt to manage clients, inventory, projects, or any other info that matters. If you want to grab the template I used in this video, it's completely free, the link's in the description. And if you're into automating your files and using smart templates, you're going to love this one too. I'll see you there.